Hello and welcome to the Season 7 PCL Generations League Power Rankings done by me and Brian, obviously the authority on the subject, with me being yes, not even competing yes. in it this year. Anyway, I will yeah. be going from worst to best. Um, I think um, one thing important to point out is that this season we have three leagues, of course, uh, so the Generations isn't a uh, bottom uh, league anymore, now it is a second best. A few more things. Um, in this league, there are no cut moves allowed, so return, hidden power, stuff like that is not allowed. Uh, we do allow transfer moves, however, so High Dragon, for example, can learn Roost, um, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Yes, and also the other things, so, such as Z crystals, not being available either, so you can't use Z moves. Yes, um, Dynamaxing and uh, Z crystals are banned. Yes, and we do allow Megas, however. And just before we get into the list proper, when we say worst, we don't mean bad. None of the teams here no, are no, like no, actually not. bad. No. <coughs> no. 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 But um, we're gonna hopefully um, give some good pointers that you can improve. Um, but but I think overall, generations drafted really well. So. Yeah. Well, we'll try at the but very least. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. without further ado, go to number sixteen ranking, which is. Furies, the Terabit Tyranitars. This, yep. this is um, an interesting team. <laughs> it's... Yeah, yeah it while we were talking about it, we sort of came to the conclusion that it was kind of a load of mods that don't really fit all that well together. Like, they're all good Pokemon, mm -hmm. obviously, but a lot of it just doesn't really gel in the way you, you want a team to do, really. Like, for instance, you've got a load of Ninetales, which sets up Hail, but you've got nothing that can take advantage of it at all. Um, you also have Hippowdon and Ninetales on the same team, so you have two types of weather, but not a common to really. Um, but you have a lot of good Pokemon here. Um, you have Necrozma, who now gets um, Dragon Dance as well as Call Mind, and I'll title nice what it already had. Um, so Necrozma itself got a lot better. Um, Primarina and Cobalion would have been a start to a good Dragon Steel Berry Core. But this team doesn't have a dragon, um, which is also interesting. Not all teams do need a dragon, but it's kind of weird. Illumise here is a bit weird. You have some really good cores in Primarina, Roserade, and Coalossal, plus Stentiscorch, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think an Aurora Veil team without like a proper setup mon is pretty strange. Um, because you have Cobalion and Stentiscorch who can really set up, and then Necrozma as well, which are kind of weird breakers, to be honest. Um, so the team lacks a bit of focus overall, I think, which is the biggest problem. Because um, there's a lot of hazard stacking as well. You have uh, Roserade, you have Colossal, um, who both get like spikes, toxic spikes, stealth rocks, all that. I don't know who gets stealth rocks. Um, so, you know, everything that there should be is here. Or from like a dragon type and all that, but it really lacks focus overall. Um, another thing that we should mention is that um, the team does like a strong breaker, um, like a fast breaker, something that can run like a scarf or something. Um, because you have Cobalion uh, all on nine tails who peak out at 110 almost, um, but they don't really have the breaking power that you want around that speed here. Tornado Steering, of course, is lot faster than that, but it also doesn't want to fulfill a breaking role. It prefers being defensive with the regenerator. You got anything to add? Yeah, I mean, you brought up the thing about Tornado, so it can run an offensive role if it needs to, but as you said, <laughs> it's really, really defensive. Uh, and aside yeah. from that, there's just like a couple of other mods in here which I don't really see the point of. Uh, Colossal kind of springs to mind when you've already got Center Scorch. I mean, it can take, yeah. it can take advantage of Sand, but it still doesn't get the best out of it and it's just not, I think you could probably do a better option and also Illumise yeah it's got practice support but it's not as good as Bulby who already isn't that good <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of hard to but I'm pretty sure it was just picked up because it's a one point mon so we shouldn't probably <laughs> worry too much about that that's true but hey the points all add up so yeah, yeah. um so I think, in conclusion, this really isn't a bad team, but you really need to focus on your course, I think, because um, that's really what, you know, 
your draft should be centered around, and it really lacks focus to your team. Um, because you have a lot of good Pokemon here. You could easily pick up some something that patches up uh, all these problems we just pointed out. Because at its core it seems pretty nice, um, but it really lacks focus. Okay, so number 15 is Majora, Louisville Norbat, Neubatz. I mean, right off the bat, yes. you can see some key mods here, mainly me and Rotom Wash, who are draft staples and just really good Pokemon in general. And you've got some other good stuff in there as well, like Mega Charizard X and some other good stuff like Thunderous and Nido King. But when you look at that and sort of look at the lower tier mods that are available, you kind of feel like they could be doing a little bit more, maybe. It is interesting looking at this because you do got have sort of got a kind of, I guess like a sort of unknown element in Copper Raja, which we haven't seen a whole lot lately. I mean, I haven't, but then I don't go on ladders and I barely play Pokemon anymore, so I don't know why any yeah. of you are taking this seriously. Uh, so. Yeah, Copper Raja has a very interesting role, I think. Um, it does have Stealth Rock, it's pretty bulky. Um, but it also has Sheer Force with Life Orb, making it a pretty solid breaker with a lot of coverage. In Play Rough, Power Whip, um, I think it gets Iron Head, um, High Horsepower, I think, as well. Um, which, you know, it could be used as a breaker, but it's very strange to have, like, a Pokemon at 30 speed be a breaker, especially when it's a Steel type, I think. Um, overall, this team isn't bad. Um, you have Mega Charizard, who I think is. Really nice here on this team with a lot of good defoggers for it. Um, especially Mega Charizard and Wash who pair really well together. But I think um, the main point is that the bottom Pokemon, like, you know, the, the last five or something, Sidurai, Aromatis, no Tank, and Scrafty, I think, uh, those are big ones, and Cobaraja. They don't really fit the team too well. Um, they're all good Pokemon, but I think um, they all pretty much sing, play the same support role. Especially Aromatis and Miltank, who are like bulky switch ins. Um, I do like Miltank and the Sidurai together. Uh, Miltank providing that um, thick fat. Um, well, it also gives a ghost immunity, and the Sidurai, of course, uh, giving that fighting immunity is pretty nice. Um, so the defensive backbone of this team is pretty nice. Um, Mega Charizard and Thunderous being the, the breakers of the team. Um, I feel like this seems going to be pretty predictable when it comes down to it. You're always going to see set up Mega Charizard. You're usually going to see Scarf Needle King because this team doesn't really have any other Scarf Pokemon it can use. Um, not at all. Maybe Rotom Wash with a Scarf, but I don't think that's the best. Um, especially when you want it to play a defensive role with uh, Mega Charizard. Um, Thunderous is always good with Agility and Acid Blob pretty solid. Gets a lot of coverage. Um, but you don't want to rely on the same Pokemon every every battle, pretty much, because it's 11 weeks. Um, so you don't want to become predictable. Um, so, overall, I think uh, predictability is the big part here. Um, there is a possibility of Trick Room with Mew, I guess, for Cobaraja, which can be nice. Um, Scrafty, as well is pretty nice, having Dragon Dance, having Crunch, uh, knock off I mean. Um, but it does, I don't know, I think it could use a better um, Breaker alongside Mega Charizard and Thunderous. What do you think? Yeah, that's kind of the point really. Uh, <coughs> it's, it, I think it's lacking a little bit in special power. I mean, you've got Nido King and Thunderous, but aside from that, it's pretty basic. There's also the point mm -hmm. of the speed tiers, which uh, might have been brought up, but you've got three Pokemon yes. with 100 speed and one 111, and that's your fastest one, I believe that's Thunderous. And it kind of leaves you, it makes you a little bit more predictable because a lot of opponents will be able to see that and be able to run Modest, and it also means yeah. your Nido King will be running Scarf a lot of the time, so it can outspeed a lot of things because the rest of your team can't cover for it. Exactly. And it, it can, um, can it still definitely work. It can absolutely work because you've got some nice stuff here, like Charax, Copperage, Aromatis, that's a decent core. It could be better, mm -hmm. obviously. I don't really rate Aromatis that highly, but that's because of experiences I've had with it previously. But it yeah. can, and I don't think there's much stopping this team from doing well. It's just that it's up against some pretty stiff competition. The biggest problem with this team is definitely its predictability. Um, 
but I'm sure you can make it work um, if you just patch up your lower tiers I think definitely could be a decent team um, alright on to the next one now we're definitely coming to the better teams in my opinion um, okay. Okay. these are all teams that definitely could have been in between each other from here on out yeah um, they're all quite close apart from like maybe the top three and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. in this case number 14 Eggschmib219 Chicago Cinderace now yep. First thing you see when you look at this team, Dragonite, Heatrite, and Sylveon. That is a delicious Fairy Dragon Steel core. I love that core so much. And then you look at the ones they've drafted around it Crocodile, Glaring Corsler, Milotic. Those are just really, really annoying ones to deal with just all of the time. Mm -hmm. And you've got other stuff alongside it as well, like Mega Gallade, Sarina, even Boltund, I think, could be quite good in this team as well because it provides quite a lot of speed. Yeah. It's like Minetric, but better. In every way. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, you've also got Vinalux, which is running into the same problem I had previously with uh, Alone Nine Tails on Fury's team. There's no nothing else that can really take advantage of it, but it, most teams benefit from having an Aurora Veil up, especially something like, well, I was going to say Dragonite, but multi scale makes that kind of irrelevant. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I suppose Crocodile, mm -hmm. Crocodile could probably get some use out of it. Gallade get some use out of it as well. I think this yeah. team can do a lot of work. It looks very good on paper. Mm -hmm. I think its course definitely is what sets it apart. Dragonite, Heatran, and Sylveon, as you pointed out, but also Serena, Milotic, and Heatran. Uh, Serena is a really good ground, in, uh, ground resistance for Heatran. Um, and apart from that, like, Crocodile is a ghost resist here. It's pretty nice. Um, it has a good speed here, Crocodile, in this team. Bolton as well. Boltund, I think, is going to be really nice here. Because it is so fast, I think it's going to be a good revenge killer. I do think you're going to need to run Crocodile with a Scarf often, just because it peaks at 92, which is your highest for a Scarf Pokemon, which isn't that great, but, you know, you'll deal with it. Uh, Mega Glade is super strong, as always. Uh, it's, what, 165 attack, I think it is? Uh, with Swords and Close Combat, it's an Headbutt, uh, Knock Off, Leaf Blade. It's pretty damn good. Um, but I do think grabbing both Dragonite and Vanillix is a bit strange. Dragonite, who in this generation, um, of course, got the heavy duty boots, which would otherwise be amazing. It's kind of hindered by that uh, with Vanillix. Now it breaks its multi scale if you want to bring it. Um, you could all, of course, bring leftovers, which would counter that hail, but I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but apart from that, you have a really solid team. I think Sylveon with Wish Report here is very nice. The Larian Corsola, of course, is super bulky. Uh, you have a lot of Stealth Rock users, which is nice. Um, overall, a very solid team, I think. Yeah. you have anything else to add? Uh, there is one more thing in there. I think this team lacks a little bit in Special Breakers. Because you've got modes that can do it. Sylveon is a, can hit <laughs> really hard with Hyper Voice, and Heatran can run some right. good sets as well. But... Other than that, it's really kind of lacking on the special front. So something mm -hmm. that can dish out a lot of good special damage because I feel like something, yeah. something with a good physically defensive core could probably take on this team pretty well. Mm -hmm. Especially, I think you need a, a special attacker that is also fast. Um, we also pointed out while talking previously um, that this team could struggle with bulky fairy types um, because there's only Heatran really to stop them. Uh, your main attackers in Dragonite and Mega Glade, or main setup attackers, I should say, are weak to them, which is kind of a problem. Um, Crocodile is also weak to the so you really only have Heatran who counters them. So maybe that's something you can look into as well. Um, I could see Gengar or something working here, with 110 speed, now having Nasty Blood as well. But uh, I do think you need a special breaker. Uh, definitely. Maybe something that can help with fairy types would be nice. I think that about does it for this scene. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so that brings us on to number 13, the mighty Gliscor's New York Gliscor. Or Gliscor, I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, <laughs> so, once again, the first thing you see when you look at this is that core, Kamoo, Scissor, Clefable. I love all of those mods, and I think they, mm -hmm. for one, they work really well together, as well as being really good mods in their own right. Like, especially with the new toys that Kamoa got this generation, uh, Klango's Soul is legal, and that's going to be 
very very important I think because Kamo yeah. is just Kamo is just one of those Pokemon that can run mix sets really well I think it's gen- it's generally mm-hmm. more suited to physical but it's got a lot going for it on the special side as well yeah especially now with the throat spray uh, boosting is it boost does it boost clanging skills or uh, it is it, it is cell based so I think it does uh, clanging, uh, clanging scales. Yeah, so it definitely can be a way better special attacker than previous it was, which it gets flamethrower. I think it gets thunderbolt Thunder- as well. Uh, it does get flash cannon. Uh, yeah, gets a lot of stuff, and uh, dragon fighting is just a really good offensive typing um, in itself. Yeah, you're hitting so, uh, you're hitting every type with those two stabs basically, like aside from mm-hmm. fairy. <laughs> So that's you, know, you need to run flash cannon, but aside from that, you're hitting a lot of stuff with just those two types. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and Sizzler and Clefable, of course, are also very good Pokemon in this core. And they cover each other really well, I think. Uh, and then you also have Toxapex, who works really well with Sizzler, uh, with Kumo'o. Uh, for Kumo'o for the fairy type, Sizzler for the fire types, of course. Um, and then. Below that, you also have Obstagoon. Obstagoon, I think, will be very interesting. Uh, in my opinion, it pairs really well with Toxapex um, as a psychic immunity. Uh, and also, Ghost uh, immunity is pretty nice to have in one Pokemon. Um, it has a really good speed set at 95 speed, which is very nice. It can be a breaker with Guts. Um, but I don't know if you'll always want to bring that. Uh, I think its signature move, Obstruct, is really nice. Lowering opponent's defense when they attack you uh, means that you could potentially break them way easier, or even scare them out. Um, and then I think Mega Electric is also worth pointing out, since it got pretty nerfed um, with the hidden power being gone. Now it also only has like uh, Electric and Fire in its arsenal. It doesn't really have much else. Um, maybe like Physical? I don't know how good its physical stack uh, stat is though, but it of course does uh, have the highest speed stat in this team, 135. After that you have Thornadus, um, was 111, which is not the greatest. In general this, be- uh, this team is also a bit slow, but that's fine I think. Uh, Mega Manectric being so fast is always good. Uh, Elder Goss here is also pretty good as a ground, immuni- uh, ground resistance, I think. Um, for Toxapex, that's just a really good pairing. Both have Regenerator. Oligos has Rapid Spin, uh, which means that you don't need to run like Defog on Scizor, which is nice. Um, Steelix, I think, is a bit weird here, um, because as a ground type, uh, it's very important in drafts. I don't think the ground steel type here really helps. I think Steelix doesn't really add much to the team, apart from, I guess, Stealth Rocks, but a lot of Pokemon on your team already have Stealth Rocks. So I think another ground type would be nice. Um, still exists now with Body Press, but I don't think that's worth putting in your team for. Um, apart from that, I think it's a very solid team. I think Kamo, Scizor, Clefable, and Toxapex alone with your team very high. That's just a very good defensive and offensive core. you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, just basically the same points really. Steelix is a little bit... Uh, it's just there, I suppose. I can't really see it being brought in many situations that you wouldn't bring Scissor for, for instance. Uh, I think its position could probably be replaced by another ground type. I believe Sandaconda is in the same tier and available, and I do think right. that's better than yeah. Steelix in this particular team. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it all works together, and I do think it can do very well. There's nothing stopping it. It's just... Could be a little bit harder to make work than some of the others. Who knows? I guess we'll see. Yeah, um, but definitely its core put so high. Just a very solid core that will definitely, uh, definitely help you out further on. Okay. Okay. On to the next team. We move on to number twelve, Apple Valley Ampharos, coached by Elbereth. Once again with this team, Latias, Skarmory, Comfy is the Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and then you've got also got no fire types, so there's no fire water grass core. Uh, which I suppose yeah. get, uh, we'll get that get to that later, but we'll talk about the positive yeah. first. Okay, so yeah. the defensive side of this team horrifies me, because <laughs> it is mm-hmm. it looks like an absolute pain to deal with. Latias, Skarmory, Cresselia, Amoongus, Comfy, even Cursula to some extent, those are all good defensive Pokemon 
especially yeah. especially those first four. I I think that could be an extremely powerful, extremely tough thing to break through at the very least. I think that um, while this team is relatively slow, it has two great scarfers in uh, Nemoswine and Ladias. Nemoswine, of course, being super good even without a scarf. Um, it's just really good to have on a team. Nice and ground is super hard to switch into. Um, team also has a ton of priority. I shard, uh, Excel Rock, Aqua Jet, uh, Sucker Punch. We have all that. So really, the speed here don't matter so much. Um, the team also has Cresselia, um, who can set up Trick Room for Emperor's Mega, or Mega Emperor's, I should say. Um, Cursola and Crowdon, which is pretty good. Crowdon then can just run Swords Dance instead of Dragon Dance, which is nice. And uh, I think Crowdon can be really good on the team, honestly. Um, as a water type, you don't see it often. Usually, it's drafted with another white water type to, you know, have that bulk. Uh, but I think it does really well here, especially since you have such a good trick room user. Um, and Skarmory providing spikes, I think, is really nice as well. Um, it gives you a lot of options, I think. Um, yeah, apart from that, Skarmory, Mogus, Cresselia, as you already said, is just incredible defensively. Um, it helps their team out a lot. You have a lot of few turn as well, um, which is nice. I think uh, Mega Ampharos with uh, Volt Switch is good as well. Um, and I think Cresselia gets Teleport now too. I want to double check that though. Which Teleport, I should mention, now is uh, different than the last generations. Now Teleport uh, is a minus priority move that can actually send you out of battle. Um, Okay, so it doesn't. Uh, Cresselia doesn't have it, but we'll mention it later on. Um, I think this team is definitely good, but not having a fire type for Amoongus and, uh, I guess, Crawdon isn't the best. I think a defensive fire type could be pretty nice here, especially for fire type attacks on this team. Um, now, there is one very good fire type left, which is Incineroar, which you have already two uh, dark types, but I think adding Incineroar is fine. Uh, it has a great speed here, Intimidate, which is nice. Now it also has a defeat if they do the boots. Um, I think defensively, it will make your team a lot better. What it already is, of course. Um, so I think you could probably drop uh, Lycanroc Dusk for that. And you already have the priority uh, that it gives you. So, you know, uh, and it pretty much fulfills the same attacking role as Mamoswine anyway. Uh, Incineroar can definitely improve your team here. So consider picking that up. Uh, do you have anything to add, James? Yeah, that's basically the main point. Uh, like a rock, like a rock, like a rock. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it needs to be in the same team as something like Mammoth Swine. And I am a massive advocate for Mammoth Swine. It's one of my favorite Pokemon to use in draft, just because it's just so consistent. It will always put in the job yeah. for you. So I think Lycan Rock can safely be replaced, and I think Incineroar is a very good replacement for this team. There is already two Dark types already, but they don't actually share that many weaknesses. I believe it only shares no, one no. weakness with Crawdon, and the rest is either resisted or... Because, well, yes, because it's resisted because of these secondary typings. So I yeah. think and it's worth looking into. I think Gun Tank itself isn't that necessary anyway. Um, I don't think you'll be bringing it too much since you have a good default in Skarmory. And comfy. Good knockoff user. I don't know. Um, yeah, comfy as well, of course. Um, and Ladias. So, I don't. Skin Tank's role is only here to be a grounded poison, I think. Which is fine. So, I think adding Incineroar is good anyway, even if it does share uh, weakness with uh, Skin Tank. Uh, but overall, it's a very good team, I think. The defensive core in this team, uh, combined with the fact that you have Trick Room for Mega Ampharos. Is really nice. Okay, I think that about covers it for this team. Um, on to the next one. Okay, so that moves on to number 11, I think. Brian, yeah, you. Mine. Yes, the Crystal yes. Bionics. Uh, I'll let I'll you talk just... about this first. Yeah, okay, good. Um, basically, my idea for this draft uh, was to go only hazard removal Pokemon. So only Pokemon with Defog, Rapid Spin, or in the race, this case, Scorching. Um, I was lucky enough to get High Dragon and Excadrill um, in round 1 and 2. Uh, Excadrill is incredible generation, having Rapid Spin being buff to plus 1 speed, safety base power is pretty good. Um, it means that I don't always have to run Scarf on Excadrill. Um, 
and it's just super super good Pokemon in draft I think uh, it's very strong gets self rocks uh, gets rapid spin iron head uh, you don't need much else honestly uh, high dragon is pretty amazing this generation now it has uh, nasty plot and dragon dance which is pretty incredible um, I think Cinderace uh, can be pretty good as well. It has an incredible speed stat of 119, um, which is very nice, I think. Uh, Pyro Ball, pretty overpowered on an Untwainly base attack, or yeah, base power, I should say, um, with no added effect. It doesn't do any recoil or anything. Only, I think, it's 95% accurate, which is fine. Um, apart from that, uh, I think Rubombi. Uh, it's very nice too. Gives me sticky web for Cloister Thunderous, uh, which is nice. Um, Surfetched is very underrated. Well, not underrated yet, but uh, Leaf Blade Close Combat, which is nice. Uh, also, Scrappy got buffed this generation. It is now immune to Intimidate, which is pretty good. Um, I think the biggest weakness of this team would be my Fire and Water weakness. Um, I think a strong Fire type can maybe put steam in a bit of a problem but I do have Xvideo it's a possible scarf which is nice um, and apart from that I think drafting a, not drafting a grass type maybe was a bit of a bad idea um, but overall I think I have a lot of offensive power uh, in Swallow in Thunder Assyrian uh, I think it's well balanced overall what do you think? Um, yeah, basically the same points. Uh, it's, the thing that definitely stood out to me was the lack of a grass type, but because of your restriction, there's not all that many you can go for. I mean, there's the big mm -hmm. ones are Sarina and Superior, and I think they, you, you either didn't want to use them or they were both gone by that point. And yeah. the other one is stuff like Shiftry, and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. So... <laughs> Yeah, I think it can do well. Uh, it's an interesting restriction, especially considering that this is the generation that they introduced the thing that completely invalidates entry hazards. But mm -hmm. it can work. I've used quite a lot of these ones before to varying degrees of success. I like the look of Volby on this team, especially paired with stuff like Hydreigon and Swallow I, and Thunderous as well. I think they can all mm -hmm. work quite well. Uh, it's also worth pointing out, I'm not sure if we mentioned this before, but hidden abilities, if they're not released, and are, are banned. So Cinderace cannot run Libero. If it did, oh, yeah, of course. If it did have Libero, we would ban it. So <laughs> that's all, all that needs to be said, really. Like, this is a good team, I think. I think it's ranked quite fairly, considering Brian's obviously completely biased. So, so I think yeah. one other thing uh, worth mentioning is that my defensive core doesn't help core. My defensive Pokemon don't have recovery, Boldeon and Claydol, uh, which is a bit of a bummer and kind of makes me uh, a bit weaker, I think. But honestly, if I just run offense, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think my team is strong enough to not worry about that. Okay, I think that about does it for this team. Yes, so we move on to number 10, which is Lovecraft's Miskatonic Tentacruel, the same team that he's been running since, I believe, season 2. <laughs> I think so. So, uh, you go ahead. The uh, first thing you notice when you look at this, I keep on saying that, but it's still true. The, I guess the pair, I suppose, because they kind of fulfill the same, well, not the same roles, but anyway. Aegis Slash and Mega Altaria kind of fill a Fairy Dragon Steel Core on their own, basically. Yeah. So, a very good one. both really good. Aegis Slash has been recently legalized because it has been banned since forever before, and I'm kind of interested to see how that goes. Cradley absolutely hates this Pokemon, so it's going to be interesting to see how she reacts to these battles. But other than that, I like the look of this team, again. I like the Grasswater Fire Core of Moltres, Rillaboom, and Inteleon, especially Inteleon, I think. It's kind of like a Diet Greninja, and it does, I guess, similar things, not quite as much coverage. It obviously doesn't have protein, but it's a nice it is fast, stronger. Yeah, it's a fast, very fast, and very, very quite strong. Uh, yeah, 125 special attack, really good. Yeah, essentially it's the everything you want in a glass cannon, really. It could do with a little bit more coverage, but it's got the water and ice coverage, so it, that's all it needs, really. And you've got yeah. other really good Pokemon in the world, like Terrakion, you've got Galvantia that can set up sticky webs, Moltres could be really interesting with the advent of boots. And then you've got some of the other defensive Pokemon. Weezing, I like. I like seeing that. I like seeing Dumbfound as well. 
Domphan is one of those Pokemon that just gets an ungodly amount of moves for just absolutely no reason. Like, this thing learns bounce. I don't know why. Elephants can't jump. So, that... Well, whatever. It learns everything. And then you've also got Sh Shelgon, who's here for some reason. Yeah. I guess to fill out another dragon? Shelgon is kind of a wish passer for the team. Yeah, it's not a brilliant wish passer. I suppose it can do pretty well because it's decently bulky with a Violite and it's got a nice typing, but mm. other than wish passing and I guess spreading a bit of hazard, I don't really see what this thing can do a lot of the time because I, yeah. don't, I don't think it gets recovery either, aside from wish. No. No, I don't think it does. Um, but I don't think it does a team a lot of harm. Uh, I think overall this team's pretty good. Uh, eventually giving webs to like Terrakion, for example, is incredible. Um, I think this is a very well balanced team overall. Um, the thing is, uh, it may have been able to use a psychic type. I don't think it has that, right? Uh, no, it doesn't. I think uh, a bulky psychic type would have been nice for like screens and stuff like that. Um, because now uh, Intellion kind of has to fulfill Screen's role, which his team definitely could have used with Mega Altaria, but it's not necessary. Um, I th think overall this team is very solid. Uh, B-Sharp is always good on the web team. Um, I think both B-Sharp and Aegislass is kind of redundant, but I get why he picked it up. Um, overall it's a very solid team. B-Tiers are very solid, but apart from that, it's a very good team. You have anything to add? Yeah, not really. So it's just basically it, you, what you see is what you get, really. It's a nice team with decent speed tiers. You've got Terrakion and Inteleon and yeah. boosting potential and Altaria. Who can, I, I think in the right circumstances, this team could steamroll other teams. And I'm looking forward Definitely. to see how it does. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so on to number nine into the top 10, and we have Risso, the Oklahoma Heatmore, spelt incorrectly. I'm not going to mention that. It's on the logo, okay? <laughs> I know it's on so the logo. I, I, I'm not questioning you, I'm questioning him. I'm sure it's a reference to something I don't understand. Yeah, I guess. Okay. So, Tapu Koko, Katana, Mega Sharpedo, Talonflame, Appleton, Mesprit, Mudsdale, Budsworn, Lickitung, Tentacruel, Poltygeist. This is one of those teams I feel where none of the slots have been wasted. I can see what everything on this team does at an instant. I liked yeah. the, I guess, um, I guess novelty, but also interesting potential of Appleton. I think that's going to be really interesting to see, especially with that thick fat. Having a grass type that's <clears throat> a grass and a dragon, I suppose, that's not even that badly affected by ice is a pretty yeah. interesting novelty. And resisting fire is also just kind of insane as well for a fire grass type. Especially as a grass type, yeah. Yeah. Not all this team needs much of the way of fire resistance. It does have Talonflame and Sharpedo and Tentacruel. But then again, you're not really going to rely on the first two to really catch that many fire moves. So it is good to have that. On the other hand, mm -hmm. you do have some, some other good things as part of this team as well. I... You've got Mesprit, which is a fantastic lower tier uh, mod, which just fills a lot of gaps on its own. Yeah, You've got I other agree. stuff as well, like Mudsdale. Some people don't like it. I really do. I saw how well this thing does. Uh, did it get Body Press? I'm not sure if it got Body Press. I'm actually gonna... I think it does, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to look that up very quickly because that's... Yes, it does get Body Press. That's actually kind of huge. Mm -hmm. It It's a very, very interesting, I think. Yeah, especially with Stamina. Yeah. Um, I think this team offensively is pretty amazing. Tapu Koko, Kartana, uh, Team Kartana and Buzzol, I think you're very, like, very solid. Uh, Talonflame, of course, gets the heavy duty boost this season, which is nice. Um, so it's pretty much guaranteed to have a uh, Prankster Bay favored, pretty much. I guess Sharpedo, especially here, is very good. Um, I think that it's gonna be very solid on this team, since Kartana, Tapu Koko, Downflame and Puzzle are going to do a lot of cleaning or a lot of sweeping. Uh, Mega Sharpedo will often just come clean up afterward. Uh, I really like the pairing of Cartana and Appleton. Um, with Appleton being the second grass type who can actually resist fire, it's pretty genius. <laughs> um, I like Tentacruel giving you Toxic Spice. Uh, very solid on this team. And Poltergeist, of course, uh, being a shell smasher. And potentially. Um, 
providing Tapu Koko with a nasty plot through Baton Pass is very nice. That can be definitely game changing too. Um, overall, I think it's a very solid team, a very hyper offense, and uh, the offensive Pokemon support each other really well. I think the speed tiers are also incredible. They really are. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, it is worth noting that Tapu Koko did get a little bit of a nerf this season, uh, especially because right. there's, there's no Z crystals and Electric Terrain did get a slight uh, damage nerf. So. Mm -hmm. It's probably not going to run through teams the same way it did in previous seasons, but it's obviously still an extremely good Pokemon. Otherwise, they would it would have been drafted in round one in I believe every league. So this team looks good. I'm interested to see how it does. To the next one. Okay, number eight, Long Island Lugia's by Zoot with his album cover logo. Same things really. It's got some good stuff. Jirachi, uh, where's his dragon type? Tyrantrum and. Golden Weezing. Galarian Weezing. I forget it's a fairy, yes. Those three, <laughs> those three they're, they're a good call. I like Weezing. I like Weezing a lot in draft because mm -hmm. it's it looks so versatile. Like, all three of its abilities are fantastic. Yeah, it really is. I think Weezing and Jirachi is a really nice pairing, too. You have a lot of speed here. Zero Aura, Furnape, uh, Greninja. It's a very fast team. And then you also have a lot of bulk, too. You have uh, Glycor and Lantern who pair really well together. You have Core Geist and Type Nova who pair really well together. Jirachi isn't forced into a defensive role here, which is nice. Uh, you do lack a bit of special breakers. Uh, you know, only ones you really have are Zero Aura and Burnape. Uh, Greninja also counts, but it only has one of the three special attack. So I'm not really too keen on that. Uh, I do like Greninja for the past spikes. But it could be better on the special side, I think, your team. Um, but defensively, the team is very nice. You have a lot of U-turn and, and uh, Volt Switch, which is nice. You can basically just get Zero Aura for an ape in for free. Uh, especially with Clyde and Lantern, both getting it, and Titan, of course, as well. Um, I think overall, the team is pretty solid. I think defensively and offensively, uh, it works really well together. Uh, just a quick note, I'm not entirely convinced by Mega Heracross's presence in this team because it doesn't have webs and, and there's already some pretty right. strong physical uh, presence in the form of like Zero Aura and Infernape in there already. I feel like a, maybe a slightly different That's Mega fair. could have benefited. I don't know what's available, but potentially something like, say, Mega Gardevoir, if it was available, I think would fit this team quite nicely. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, it's a good-looking team. I, I, love, I love the way Lantern and Gligar uh, complement each other, because I, I think they do it very, very well. And the rest of the team mm -hmm. looks very solid as well. I like Type Null. I think it's quite underrated in draft. Uh, it's a real pain to deal with with a Violite. And it's, yeah. it can do very well, though I, it is worth pointing out that Return isn't available, so I don't actually know what its strongest uh, normal move is. I think it runs Crush Claw now. Crush Claw, that's... It's not the best it's option. It's not the best, no. But it, but it is there, and it can do something. So, uh, yeah, that's our number eight pick, and that goes straight on to number seven: Pikachu Zappy Zap and the Seattle Sharpedo. Yes, Mega Scizor is incredible this season. With uh, Pin Power being gone, it's very hard to counter, uh, especially once it gets up a Sword Sense. I think it's going to be a tough one to deal with. Um, Regular Scissor as well, of course, but Mega Scissor especially as out Um This team offensively, like the first eight Pokemon, are incredible. Mega Scissor, Victini, Seismito, Zapdos, Shaman, Kieran, Kelio, all very high value picks. Um, they work really well together. I think Seismito and Zapdos defensively works really well together. Um, Victini being a great breaker, of course. Uh, and Kieran, uh, especially. Kyurem now gets Dragon Dance and Icicle Spear. It's pretty insane. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out this season. Um, Keldeo now gets Air Slash, which is nice for Grass types. Um, I think overall just a very solid team. Um, you, below that, you also have Smeargle, Sableye, and Quillfish, and Clefairy, I guess, uh, who all kind of support the other Pokemon. Um, Smeargle can set up Sticky Web, which is very nice for stuff like Victini and Keldeo, uh, even Curum. Uh, it can also set up Toxic Spike, it can basically do anything, it's uh, it's Mirgo. 
Glowfish is pretty good here too. I think with Thunder Wave, uh, and just as a pretty tight counter, it's pretty nice. Um, overall, I think it's a very good team. I think if you bring any combination of above five with like uh, anything below that, uh, above eight, I mean, um, you're gonna have a very good, uh, a very good team. Um, you also have uh, the option of running rain with Smeargle because Seismitoad and Zapdos. Seismitoad gets of course swim swim, and Zapdos can just fire off thunders that way. Uh, also worth mentioning, uh, Seismitoad now gets power whip. Uh, wouldn't be that much of a difference if now they didn't mean that it could just uh, fire those off at water types. Important. Uh, do you have anything to add? Uh, just to note that I do think the fairy type could be a bit better. Clefairy is just Clefable but worse in every imaginable way which is unsurprising really. <coughs> it can still do things, it's definitely a decent uh, support Pokemon and it's got a decent amount of bulk to go along with it but I think what this team would like is just a, a just another fairy type, just a better fairy type if one was available. But I don't think there is. That's just the thing with yeah. fairy types; they're so in demand that if you don't get a good one, you have to settle for something second best. So mm -hmm. aside from that, Sableye is a little bit of an interesting pick. Uh, I probably wouldn't pick it personally if I had this team, but I can see what it does. So it's going to be interesting to see how it gets on. Really, it's obviously still a very good team. Like that top uh, seven Pokemon, I think they're all extremely good. Very, very good. They yeah. can, they're all staples. I can see this team mm -hmm. doing very well in the right circumstances. Yeah, but I do think uh, it's definitely worth pointing out that Mega Scizor basically is switching into both Fairy and Dragon type moves, which is not that good, I think, when you want to, or you can run it so offensively now without hidden power. So that's just something uh, worth pointing out. But I think overall the team is indeed very good overall. Okay. On to the next one, I say. Okay, number six. Salt Lake City Slowbos with Lip Boy and what I'm officially dubbing as the worst logo of the season. This is an interesting team. You've got your the new darling of this generation, Dragapult, in combination with things like Tapu Fini and Corviknight, which I think that's a that's a very, very good uh, Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Fini probably doesn't benefit them in the same way it would other things because of the Misty Terrain, but it's still a good Pokemon in its own right. Could be better, but mm -hmm. who cares? It's still really good. Uh, and then you've got other things which are really good on any team. Arcanine, Mega Venus was always annoying to deal with. Tyranitar, Landorus. Especially, that's actually something that I hadn't thought of, but Tyranitar and Landorus actually synchronize quite well because of their Sand Force. Yes. Which is not something I considered up until about five seconds ago, so oh. that's quite interesting. <laughs> nice. Uh... Yeah, this is just a very good team, I think. Uh, it really drafted well around Mega Venusaur. Uh, Mega Venusaur, Orc9, and Top of Finish is a really strong water fire grass core that basically carries the entire team. Um, then you also have Corby Knight, which is just very nice, uh, especially now that Jolteon is there as well for those uh, electric type moves. And I think it's also worth pointing out that Mega Venusaur works incredibly well with Cyranitar. Uh, Tyrants are resisting both Psychic and Flying type moves. Uh, it's pretty insane. Uh, overall, just a very solid team. It's just a very good team offensively. Um, I think the bottom two Pokemon are very lackluster, but you probably picked it up, just, you know, I'm not gonna keep uh, talking about it. This team is just very strong offensively and defensively. It's gonna be very hard to take down. Um, your speed tiers are very nice uh, and really fast. Uh, but I think anything above 115 will be able to run Modest and Adamant, which is maybe something to think about. Uh, but it isn't the worst problem to have, honestly. Uh, it is also worth pointing out that uh, Dragapult is a bit nerfed by Tabu Fini being there, um, since it can't run Dragon Darts or Draco Meteor, um, which is a bit unfortunate. I think uh, it definitely does like that stab. Um, but I think Tapu Fini isn't always necessary in every game. Um, another terrain buff worth mentioning is that it can now be defogged away. Um, which is interesting if you want to run defog on Tapu Fini. You do have Corviknight for defog as well. Um, but it is worth mentioning. Lander's Tire of Bandit is also a great combination. Um, apart from that, I think it's a very solid team. Uh, I don't think I missed 
anything. Aside from the bottom two Pokemon, and I can't begin to imagine why you drafted them, Grottle, I don't rate Grottle much at all, especially with Mega Venusaur there, and Cast Form, as far as I can tell, does Defog and literally nothing else, so I think both of them could be dropped and just like something that's not awful could be picked up for the lower tiers after, I think, yeah. two points left over. I think you could probably find something that's better than both of them put together, which honestly isn't hard, but... Hey, it's a good team. I can see it doing well. Yeah, really is. Really is. Uh, I think Omsar is really good here as well. Um, because it relieves Lavanders and Tyranitar from having to run Stealth Rock. Uh, so Omsar can just fire off Skulls. It also means that Aquafina doesn't always have to be brung, brung, brought as a water type. Uh, which is nice. But I think that about covers it for this team. Just very solid Mega Venusaur team overall. Okay. On to the next one. Okay, and possibly the surprise of the draft, number five, Ultra Goomba and the Seattle Seals. I was not expecting this when Goomba stuck to his roots and drafted Sobble in round one. We're just not gonna mention that. That is that is not a no. factor. Sobble can't do anything. We know it can't do anything. He knows it can't do anything. He's just committed to the bit. So, look at the rest Isn't of the that team. Funny, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's his one joke. He's, anyway. been, he's been riding out for a while. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. aside from that, this is a tasty team. I love basically all of these mods that he's drafted, aside from the obvious. I think it's. I yeah. think it, it all works really well together. Like Landisteria, that's a draft staple. That's really, really good. Weavile's really good. Duraludon's an interesting pick. I I like it very much as a, as a dragon type. Bronzong is really really nice. Whimsicott's good for the usual prankster things, and you've also got Holucha and Pincurchin uh, drafted alongside it. You don't necessarily have to run the normal seed set anymore because Holucha now gets access to close combat and white herb, so it can kind of self-sustain itself in the way that it couldn't do before. But yeah. aside from that, Pinchurchin's a really good model on its own as well. It's one of those mods that you don't really expect to do well, considering, well, just what it is. Wait, it looks. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a CO2 with a butt on its face. But yes, uh, it's <laughs> it looks good. Uh, and it's a slow turner, which is something that's always nice. And it's su surprisingly powerful. Like, I think it's 105 special attack and attack. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's 90. Um, but it? anyway, yeah. I'll look it up for, for a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Churchin also has spikes and toxic spikes, which is really nice for the team, I think. Um, and aside from that, I think, you know, having slow volt switch memento is also really good. If you do want to bring it with Halucha, uh, you can just memento up Halucha, you can sort sense after very freely. Um, I really love the uh, the Dragon Fairy Steel Core on this team with uh, Mega Gardevoir, Dreladon, and Bronzon. It's just a very nice pairing. Um, and honestly, um, Mega Gardevoir is also worth pointing out that it now gets Mystical Fire, uh, which is a very important buff, uh, because Mega Gardevoir can basically hit everything now. Usually Steel Types was a very tough one for Mega Gardevoir, you need to draft good Pokémon around that. Um, but Mystical Fire is such a good buff. Um, it also enjoys the Teleport buff now, uh, it enjoys the uh, Healing Wish buff. Healing Wish now works that way that if you use it uh, on a Pokemon that's already full, uh, at full HP, it basically gets stored until you send the next Pokemon out that has been there, uh, which is a pretty nice buff. I don't think you'll be running uh, Healing Wish that, man, not that much on Mega Gardevoir, but uh, it's still worth pointing out, I think. Uh, a rock when it bringing a uh, sticky web here is pretty nice. And we didn't even point out Landorus Syrian yet. Landorus Syrian now gets to live in a world without hidden power ice, which is so insane. Uh, it is already incredible Pokemon, and you already have a bunch of Pokemon that can uh, do Stealth Rock instead of it, with uh, I think Duraludon also gets it, I'm not sure, but Bronzong is just super reliable with Stealth Rock use it. Um, so Landers can often just be brought super offensively. Um, you do need to remember that a few new ability, a few abilities now are immune to Intimidate, but apart from that, Landers is just incredible. Uh, hidden power being gone, so stupid. Um, and overall, 
the offensive Pokemon we've seen are so incredible. You have a ton of wing cons. Um, it's just a very good team. I think Pinchurchin out Lucha. Genius pickup as a last Pokemon. Wings the card is a bit awkward here. Um, but aside from that. Uh, just a couple of things, because I've been researching Pinchurchin while you were talking, like the professional that I am. And I found out the Pinchurch in fact does not get Volt Switch, so that's... It doesn't get Volt Switch. It doesn't get Volt Switch, despite being really slow and an electric type. It does get Memento, so uh, yeah. similar, but that's that really weird. I don't know why they did that. However, it does yeah, also it get weird. it does get to both sets of spikes, which I think is pretty big. So, yeah, I pointed that out, yeah. Yeah, I, very nice. I wasn't listening. So... <laughs> I'll uh, I'll just act like I didn't hear that. Um, <laughs> it also gets recovered, which is nice. Uh, Skull, it's pretty interesting Pokemon. Um, it sucks if it doesn't get voltage, but can you do? Uh, we've all using its team as well with knockoff, it's pretty insane. Uh, but I'm gonna let you continue. Is that finished doing my research? Uh, no, this just looks like a really good team. Like aside, yeah. aside from the obvious joke. Which has been going on for far too long. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice team. I, I once again, as with all the other teams, I'm interested to see how it does because I think it's got a serious chance of promotion, if not winning the whole thing. Who knows? I I agree actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. On so to the next one. Number four, getting into the top five now. Lippe. Okay. I think that's how you pronounce your name. I've got no idea because I'm not calling you the one the one. Alcoholic Loma Mola. Celesteela. Do I need to say anything else? It's Celesteela. Luckily for him, he's drafted some other stuff around it, like Mimikyu and Latios to form an absolutely disgusting core, which just looks absolutely absolutely amazing. I love that. And then there's also the other little core as well, Volcarona, Tangrowth. And Cramorant? Question mark? Alola Mola, it's right there. It's the team name. Yeah, well, Alola you Mola. expect me to read? Really? I'm not even competing this year. Who, why did you even bring me on here? <laughs> yes, this. Uh, I'll just take it over. Uh, Alola Mola Tangrowth is pretty incredible in itself. Uh, this team is really bulky. A lot of set of users. Uh, Volcarona on this team is incredible. I think... Uh, Quiver Dance. Now we can just run heavy duty boots, so we don't need to worry about the bad defog users on this scene. Um, which is Latios and Cramorant and Volcarona itself are the only Pokemon to get defog. Um, but luckily, now that Zemo's are gone, Volcarona isn't gonna not run much else anyway. Um, it's just a very solid team. Uh, I really only need to okay, get Stealth Rock, and uh, it also gives you Stealth Quick Spikes. Uh, I think. Between Celesteela, Tangros, and Alamola, Snorlax, this team is going to be very hard to bring down. Uh, Mega Epsilon this team is very nice as well. Um, you have a lot of good offense mixed with the uh, incredible bulk. It's just a very good, uh, very good team. Yeah, the whole bulk side of things, Tangrowth and Alamola, former re Regenerator Core, which horrifies me. And aside from that, a couple of notes, I don't really... I can't really see this team getting a whole lot of use out of Chromomable because there's not really a reliable Trick Room setter. There is Latios, but I don't know why you would ever want to run that on it. Uh, but mm -hmm. there is Snorlax and there is Nidoqueen, so who knows? It could work out. Uh, I've been wrong before, many times. But, yeah, I can see this team doing really well. Incredible speed tiers as well. Um, honestly, just a very well, very well uh, thought out team, I think. Um, there isn't much else to say about it. Yeah, Needle Queen is the only stealth rock user, so maybe patch that up. You only have uh, Needle Queen as your stealth rocker. But apart from that, I think your team is very solid. Well, uh, you may also want to watch out for, uh, since uh, it's only Cramorant, uh, Latios, and Volcarono get defog, you might want to watch out for uh, opposing teams setting up stealth rock and spikes and all that to wear your defensive core down. But apart from that, it's a very solid team. Uh, and I think that about does it for it, unless you have anything else. Uh, yeah. No, that's just about it. So, we move into the top three. And this is veteran Thorazak with the Jersey City Jellison. Yeah. Right away, you can see a couple of things in this team. Ferrothorn, Drampa, Slurpuff make up the Fairy Dragon Steel Core. And you've also got uh, Suicune, Salazzle, and no grass types. 
So Ferrothorn is also a grass type. See, I did tell you. Anyway, uh, yeah, I like that second core a lot more than the first one because mm -hmm. Jampa is a little bit. Eh. But Slowpuff is a perfectly respectable fairy type, and Ferrothorn is obviously Ferrothorn, and it's going to do really well because it's Ferrothorn, and it always does. But the cores aren't really the core part of this team, ironically, because as outside of that, you've got Gliscor, Suicu, Conkelda, Ombreon, Cofagrigus, Mega Pinsir. Those are all really, really good Pokemon. Ombreon's a bit passive, but the other ones can just put in so much work. Mega Pinsir, especially. Like, I hate Mega Pinsir. I hate playing against it, so that kind of just shows how much of a good Pokemon it is. It's a headache for any team to deal with that hasn't got Lycanroc on it, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ferrothorn is really good. Uh, it's probably going to be the linchpin of this team, I think. You've got a decent amount of stuff to catch fire-type moves. You've got Drampa, you've got Salazzle, Suicune. They all work really well in tandem with it. Gliscor. Yeah, that's actually something. The hidden power removal means that Gliscor and Ferrothorn are going to thrive on this yep. team. Yep, Fer those three, Ferrothorn, Gliscor, Suicune, together already make such a good defensive core. Um, Conkeller also now gets Fog, which is very nice. Um, while Gliscor likes having to, uh, like, running Fog, you could also just go protect Stealth Rock, uh, I don't know, something like that, Roost maybe. Earthquake. Um, Gogella is just a, actually a very nice defogger since it does resist stealth rocks. Um, so Lazo and Mega Pinsor are the main breakers of this team since Drampa and Slurpuff are kind of weird, I think. Slurpuff is pretty solid as a breaker with Belly Drum. Uh, I do also like that it. Yeah, Slurpuff gets stick up, right? I believe it does, yeah. Yeah, Slurpuff also gives uh, the team stick up, which is really nice. Uh, I love that Gofagrigus. Team toxic spikes as well, um, which really makes it the job for Mega Pinsir and Salazzle way easier. Um, the only thing I would say uh, is that maybe you could use a better Scarf Pokemon um, because you have uh, Salazzle and Mega Pinsir. You're not going to use Scarf Salazzle, uh, so you might want to watch out for that. Trampa and Articuno are a bit weird, in my opinion. Uh, well, Oricuno is definitely better with uh, the Heavy Duty Boots now. I don't see it doing a lot. Um, defensively, your team is already good. And offensively, Oricuno doesn't bring anything new to the table, I think. Um, and while Drampa is a good breaker, I think it is too slow for its team. Um, I think you're better off with something like Moivern, maybe. Um, overall, it's a very solid team. Defensively, the team is incredible. Um, do you have anything uh, else to add? Yeah, those are kind of the main points. Uh, I can see Drampa working alongside Trick Room set by Grigus, and I think Conkelda can also take advantage of that. But it, And mm -hmm. I suppose Ferrothorn as well, but it also kind of goes against the rest of the team, like Mega Pinsir and uh, I suppose Salazzle as well. Yeah. There is a side option that I can see Drampa working quite well under those circumstances because its crippling lack of speed is just kind of the only thing holding it back, really. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's an interesting but, uh, yeah it's an interesting team. It definitely, is. I think it's a very thorough team. You know, I've seen them draft stuff like this before, um, and he runs it really well. So I'm sure we'll be seeing him in uh, playoffs this season, uh, especially with a team like this. I think Gliscor and Ferrothorn together on the same team without him power is pretty crazy in of itself, um, and we'll definitely have to watch out for this team. Um, apart from that, I think we've covered the entire team. Uh, so on to the next one. Number two, Enka with the Snowpoint Night Slashes. Okay, Zygarde, Grimmsnarl, Klefki. Yikes. Also technically Galarian Stubfist, but we're not going to talk about that. Okay, Zygarde is really good on its own, Grimstar's really good on its own, Klefki is the most annoying Pokemon in draft. <laughs> and that's just the start of it, really. So Valley, we've already seen how powerful that thing is, especially with the multi-attack buff, and just how good of a Pokemon it is to have in draft, because it's, it's essentially every type. Mega Blastoise is got drafted, and it's received so many new buffs. Well, one new buff, yeah. Shell Smash. 
but that's all it needs. And is rapid it? spin as well, actually. And ra the rapid but spin buff as well, but yeah. Yeah. But there you go. Thank God, this team is uh, incredible. So I got the Mega Blastoise together already. So good with their combined power. Zygarde doesn't need to fear hidden power anymore, which is already incredible, uh, because it's only weak to Ice and Dragon and Fairy, um, which uh, Mega Blastoise resists Ice in itself, which is pretty insane. You would say otherwise that Zygarde and Mega Blastoise uh, kind of are stuck against bulky water types, but Serpia is also on this team, which really just that trio of uh, breaking Pokemon is pretty incredible, in my opinion. Then you also have Fika Volt, who uh, gives the team CQ Web, uh, which is pretty insane. Also gives it slow Volt Switch, which is, which is nice. Uh, and you drafted two Prankster uh, Ice Cream Reflect users, Grimstall and Klefki, for Zygarde and Anchor Blastoise. That's pretty insane. Um, this team really does everything to help Mega Blastoise and Zygarde set up, uh, which really makes for a team that is very fearsome. Uh, there's not a, I don't think there's many Pokemon that can counter both Zygarde and Mega Blastoise. It's probably going to sweep most teams, honestly. I'm not even doubting that. Uh, a few weak links, though. Galarian Stunfisk is the only Pokemon who gets Stealth Rock, and it is Galarian Stunfisk. Who doesn't get any steel type moves or any good physical seed mount steel type moves? Uh, Instant Fisk really brings his team to an absolute halt, I think. Um, defensively, it doesn't bring anything to the table, and defensively, it, it doesn't do anything apart from setting up cell rocks. Uh, Kingler's role is kind of useless as well, as you have Mega Blastoise, who now is one of the best breakers in the game. Uh, Rapidash, I can kind of see on this team. It's B tier is really nice, um, but I, this team could do with something better uh, as a physical fire type, I think. Maybe a fighting type, something like Basic and Aura, Embor could be good. Um, overall, it's a pretty solid team, uh, but having Galarian Stunfist because it's self rock user isn't that incredible. Um, we actually uh, went over this as well uh, last, about well, yesterday. Um, and we came up with two uh, FAs that would definitely help this team. Um, since you're uh, already like this hyper offense, we figured right period would actually be a better fit if you dropped Kingler, Rapidash, and Galen instant Fisk to give yourself rocks. Uh, and Mega Blast always can basically, Mega Blast and Zygarde can basically be uh, grass and uh, ice type moves. We can often just run with weakness policy, which is very nice. Uh, a ground type I think is really important for Mega Blastoise and having Galarian Stunfisk be the well you have Mega, you have Zygarde anyway. Uh just ignore that. Um I think it seems pretty nice, but it definitely could do better. Uh Pyro also would be nice here, instead of Rapid Ash, um in case you would want that. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, yeah, it's just those kind of things. We can do, as I said, we do recommend pick up Rhyperia and Pyro if you can, if you want to. I do think they'll be better than those bottom three Pokemon you've got there. We are mm -hmm. rank ranking this team so highly, essentially based on the potential of the of Zygarde and Mega Blastoise, because I feel like they could just Pretty win much. you the majority of your games on your own. Pretty much. And then you've yeah. also got Crobat, Grimmsnarl, Vikavolt, Superior, Savali, Klefki. Like, as yeah. with basically all the teams we covered, or most of the teams we covered, those top eight are extremely good, and then for some reason you've got two or three lower tier mods that aren't going to see a whole lot of use, most likely. So, the, this is looking like a really good team, and that's essentially why we've ranked it so high. Zygarde and Mega Blastoise, we think that those two alone could really make make or break this team, basically. Yeah. And then you also have uh, Grimson and Klefki, of course, to bring screens to the table. It's pretty insane. Um, which is pretty much why it's ranked so high. Um, Tiger and Mega Blastoise really do make for an incredible breaking core. Uh, especially now that Hidden Power is gone. The thing that takes us to the number one team. Okay. Drumroll, please. Oh, you know who it is. It's Jimmy Boy Swag and the Monster Mimikyu. 
First thing you notice when you look at this team, he only drafted 9 Pokemon, which means he's the only person who's actually drafted properly. Like, the, everything is perfect on this team. Everything. I can see what everything does here. You've got Galarian, Darmanitan, Mega Latias, Tapu Mulu, Blocephalon. All of those are extraordinarily good breakers. You've even got Magnazone, which can fill in for other roles as well. And you've got good defensive Pokemon on the other side. Amanda Buzz and Swampert can both put in some very good defensive shifts, especially with the advent of Boots, which means that Amanda Buzz can actually uh, doesn't fear Star Fox anymore, which is really good for it. And then mm. you've also even got the lower tier picks. Heracross is an exceptionally good Scarf Pokemon that can put in a whole lot of work on, on its own. Uh, I guess the other one would be Swampert, and Swampert's a fantastic Pokemon. It's one of the best water ground types in the game. Yeah. It gets Stealth Rocks, it does basically everything you want a water ground type to do, really. And, mm -hmm. yeah, those are the main points, really. Yeah, I think uh, if Swampert and Herocross are your worst Pokemon, you've drafted an incredible team. Uh, I think their Manita and Megalodeus together already break incredibly well. Uh, then you also have Max Zone and Tapu Bulu somehow all in the same team. Uh, Bulu giving you like grassy terrain is really nice. It is of course uh, uh, nerfed a little bit grassy terrain, but I think that's fine. Um, Blastephalon and Naya Lego uh, do incredible breaking job as well, of course. Uh, Naya Lego putting toxic spikes uh, and stealth rocks is really good. Um, Overall, it's just an incredible team. Uh, all switch from Nagazone, U-turn from Mandibus, all really helps uh, Galeon to Manita and get in really. Um, the speed is a bit lacking, uh, but then you have incredible Scarf Pokemon, such as Heracross, Ocephalon, and Galeon that are Manita, so I don't think you have to worry too much about that. Uh, another thing worth pointing out is that Magnazone now gets teleport. With uh, buff, that's pretty good because you can basically just get out of a ground type freely uh, and give your team momentum while doing it. Uh, so, overall, this team is pretty incredible. Um, honestly, not much else to say about it. All high tier picks, uh, all on one team that really works well together, I think. Uh, they really break well for each other, and defensively, it works as well uh, between Swampert. Uh, Mandy Bus and uh, Bull, I'd say. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, well, not really. That's basically all it's covered. It's a very simple theme, but it's like it, it's just performed exceptionally well, executed exceptionally well, I should say. Like it's also worth noting that the speed uh, tiers are all even if that's probably the weakest point of the team, and it's already pretty good. Like the fastest is 110, mm -hmm. which I believe is Blacephalon or Nialego. Uh, one of those. No, it's uh, Megalodeus. Ignore me. Anyway, uh, so yeah, but it's spread out very well up until then. There's basically no gaps in between 80 and 110, so I think that's performed mm. quite well as well. It only really has to fear really, really fast stuff, which is not all that common. Most teams will have one, maybe two. But aside oh, yeah. from that, like you're not going to have to worry about most of Pokemon with 110 as you're the highest speed in all honesty and you've got other stuff which works really well as well we've got Mangas over trapping uh, you've got two beast boosts uh, which are really good but Cephalon could be really good in that role so can Naya Lego in the right circumstances you've got hazards like I mean you've got spikes not, sorry you've got stealth rocks you haven't got spikes that's probably the only thing I can think about this like it doesn't have every single kind of hazard aside yeah. from that it's mostly mostly pretty perfect it is it is a very good team um and it's crazy how this all is in one team i don't understand um but uh, yeah there's really not much else to say apart from that it's a really scary team weakness wise as well it's just very good uh, so i think we should take it to the team page where we have the final rankings um this is pretty much the outro of the video um, you see we have uh, Jimmy, Nate and Floro, the top three here. All incredible teams, I think. Uh, Generations drafted really well, actually, uh, this, this season. And I'm excited to uh, see where all the new Pokemon uh, get played, how they get played, uh, how the hidden power 
uh, being gone. I'm very curious to see how that uh, influences this draft as well. If anything else uh, you want to say, Jane? I would say the team to watch as the potential dark horse, I suppose, for this season, surprisingly enough, is Goomba. I think he's got what it takes to really put in a good effort. I mean, his memes are shit. I could but, really see that. Yeah, his memes are shit, but his drafting isn't. Yeah, I think it is my favorite team uh, of this season, at least in generations. Just a very good uh, offensive team. I think uh, there's a lot of good teams here. And even the ones that aren't already have like very good Pokemon they could patch up with. So, very excited to see where the season takes us. Uh, with that, I think we should end the video. Yes, I do apologize for the length. I was not expecting it to last this long, but yeah, we will be back later on to do the Dynasty... Dynasty? What? Destiny? Sure, the Dynasty. Dynasty. Dynasties, that's a good league. Anyway, Destiny, we'll, that will be coming soon-ish, hopefully? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sunday. it'll happen eventually, just, Sunday. just give it time. Okay, <laughs> so, see ya. with all said and done, this has been Jamie and Brian, and we will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.